The next question is, from your perspective, uh, what lessons do you think Brazil can learn from the U.S. debate and vice versa? Yeah, so I don't as, know as much about the Brazilian debate, so I probably won't be able to say a lot about that. Uh, in terms of the U.S. debate, I think there are certain areas that are very interesting for people in Brazil and others that are not interesting at all. So at a very high level, all the policy questions we had to deal with, what kind of rules do we need, um, what kind of exceptions to network neutrality rules, they are all highly relevant to Brazil. And I think in that respect, the U.S. model is actually a pretty good model for regulators around the world, uh, with one exception, which is the treatment of zero rating, which I think we should talk about more later. Um, and I would want to add that because four and a half million people filed comments as part of that debate, there is a lot of really interesting empirical data in the comments comments by startups, comments by artists, comments by musicians that could be valuable for regulators around the world because they help them to better understand what the implications of certain network neutrality rules might be. The part of the debate that I feel is not relevant to Brazil at all is the question of the legal foundation for network neutrality rules. You know, some people have told me that some people in Brazil look at what happened in the U.S. and say, well, the United States treated internet service providers as telecommunications providers in order to adopt network neutrality rules. And that means we should be doing that in the U.S., in Brazil, too. And I think that would be a huge mistake because the only reason that the U.S engaged in this complicated legal exercise of changing the classification of internet services was that there was a court decision that foreclosed the adoption of network neutrality rules based on other parts of the Communication Act. And so it was a legal choice for the FCC to reclassify internet service providers as telecommunication service providers, but it had nothing to do with the substance. And I would say that is something that is really only relevant for the US but not for the Brazilian situation. Right. Oh, <laughs> and there are actually two or three substantive points that I think are really interesting for the debate here too. So the first is that details really matter. You know, you're going through the process right now of drafting the decree for the Marco Civil, and often if you are someone who just follows the debate from a distance, you don't really see how tiny differences in in language can really affect the outcome for consumers and innovators. And I just want to give you a tiny example, which is the rules around network management, where some people think, well, of course network providers need to manage their networks, and that's a benign motivation, so let's just allow them to do that, and that's fine. And But as we found in the US, from the perspective of the user, it doesn't make a difference why an internet service provider is interfering with your application, whether it's because they hate your content or because you are a competitor or because they are managing your, their network. From your perspective as the user, the end result is the same. You can't use the application you want to use. Or if you're an application provider, it means you can't get to consumers during times when everybody wants to use the internet, when it's most important to get to users. And again, in the US in 2007, when Comcast was interfering with the torrent, I heard from many startups who came into my office and said, you know, I'm not getting funding because my venture capitalist is saying, well, if nobody likes you, you are screwed and our money is lost. But if you get really successful, then you will be singled out for discriminatory bandwidth management. And you'll be screwed as well. And so a lot of investors passed on funding applications that were potentially bandwidth intensive. And so that's a very long way of saying even these tiny details, like how you phrase your network management exception, have a huge impact on the quality of the regime you get. And then the other important point, I think, is the importance of bright line rules. So as lawyers, we are used to dealing with gray and ambiguous terms or complicated case-by-case -case proceedings all the time. And sometimes there is no other way. You know, certain principles can't be 
made more specific. So you need to apply them in a specific case. But network neutrality is different in two ways. One, the entities we are trying to protect need certainty. If I'm a startup or an investor, I need to know that my investment will be protected. And I won't get that certainty if there is a rule that says no unreasonable discrimination. Because then I will only know after someone has discriminated against me and then I go and complain and then three years later and many both hundreds of thousand dollars in legal fees later, I will know whether I was protected. And at the same time for um, ISPs, internet service providers, having certainty is important too because they want to know how they can manage their networks and you can really stifle them as well by having ambiguous rules. In addition, you know, complicated case-by-case -case rules create really high costs of regulation and really tilt the playing field against everybody who doesn't have a lot of money, who doesn't have a lot of lawyers on stuff. You know, if I'm Google or Facebook or large ISPs, I have lots of money, lots of lawyers. I can afford to fight long fights in front of regulatory agencies. If I'm a user or a small nonprofit or a startup, I need to be able to complain and say, this person is, this ISP is singling out my application and that's a violation of the rule. And then the regulator looks at it and says, yeah, it is, and no story. So the importance of bright line rules and a really careful look at the details that I think two other sort of lessons that you can carry over to other parts of the world.